I'm going to demonstrate how to build a cold frame in our vegetable garden. Cold frames are essentially rectangular boxes uh, that trap the sunlight inside. The, the sun warms the soil during the day and then a cover or sash traps that in over the night. Cold frames have a number of uses. In the spring, you could use them to start vegetable or flower seedlings before you're ready to plant them out into the garden. You can also use the cold frame to harden off greenhouse grown transplants or seedlings that you started indoors before you're ready to plant them into the garden. You can also use them to winter tender perennials or to overwinter uh, rooted cuttings that you made during the summer. We're going to use our cold frame to extend our vegetable growing season well into the winter. Okay, cold frames are constructed with a wood frame and a sash. The frame, we're, we're using wood. You can actually use uh, masonry blocks or metal. Wood provides a nice insulation. And we're just using scrap lumber that we had lying around. For the cover, we're going to use an old framed window. Uh, this glass is the ideal cover for your cold frame. You can also use a number of other materials uh, such as a thick four or six mil polyurethane, polyethylene, I'm sorry, plastic. Um, you can also use clear plexiglass for your, for your sash. Okay, let's look at how this is constructed. Um, when you're building the frame, you want the back side to be higher than the front. Um, the sun sunlight in the winter is striking the soil at an angle. It's not directly overhead. So by raising the back, we're going to allow the sun to strike more of the soil surface inside. We've just used our two inch thick wood. The two inches provides a nice insulation. And we've added some corner posts for a little extra stability. The side pieces have to be cut at an angle like this to give us our, our angle that we want. Okay. To attach the sash, we've used some metal hinges like you would use on your cabinets. We're going to go ahead and lay this over. You want to make sure that your sash is big enough to lay firmly on top of the frame. Okay, and we're just going to screw these in here. Okay, well we have that firmly in place. If you were using the polyethylene, you'd also want to attach that to a wood frame. Now the plastics aren't as insulating as our glass, so you want to create a double layer. And the best way to do this is just to attach a layer on the top and the bottom of the frame. If you are using a lighter weight frame such as the plastics, you're going to want to attach a hook to the front so that you can secure that from heavy winds. Um, a handle would also be useful on top for opening and closing our box. Now you need to situate this cold frame in an area where it's going to collect a lot of sunlight, so a nice open area. It's also a good idea to have some protection on the back side from heavy winds, so against the south side of a house or fence or an evergreen hedge would give it some nice protection. You just want to make sure that that's not hanging over and shading your box. In the soil area where you're going to be placing it, it has to be well drained. So if drainage is a problem, you're going to want to go ahead and excavate the area and put a layer of gravel down beneath your soil. The other thing you have to consider when you're locating your box is the direction. You need to situate your box so that it's running east and west with the slope facing to the south. This will let, let the light collect inside. Now there's a couple of things we could do to add extra insulation on really cold nights. You can um, cover the box with a thick blanket or sacks full of dried leaves. You can also place hay bales around the outside of your frame. In fact, you can construct a very simple cold frame simply using hay bales and a window for the cover. For those of you who aren't really into construction, there are a number of uh, pre-built cold frames that can be available commercially. 
Now regardless of what type of structure you're using, ventilation is going to be important. When, when the temperatures are high, the heat's going to collect inside here and get to really high levels that can actually kill the plants. So you're going to want to lift the box. Um, sections of wood or bricks make a nice uh, structure for ventilation. You can actually attach the wood to the frame uh, with a hinge so that it just folds up and when you close it, it stays inside. Um, this is going to, ventilation is important when on sunny days when the temperature is above 45 degrees. So even when it's pretty cold, we have to think about ventilating our cold frame. Make sure to close your cover early enough in the late afternoon or early evening to trap that heat inside. An alternative to the cold frame is to construct a miniature hoop house. This is going to consist of a curved or roof shaped frame and a polyethylene cover. You can use a number of materials for the frame. Rebar or old tent poles make a good choice. We've used uh, irrigation tubing. This is firm enough to give us a nice support but also flexible enough to bend into the curb. We've attached it using pipe clamps to our frame here. We've also set the bottom into the ground. If you want a more permanent structure, you can build a wood frame along the ground to attach your, your frame to. It's a good idea to plant your bed before you go ahead and cover it. We've, we're growing lettuce here. Other good crops for the hoop house are kale and spinach chives, green onions, carrots, and radishes. Um, this type of structure is really good if you want to cover a large area like we're doing here. Make sure that you set your frames close enough together to provide a nice support system. We're only going to have a single layer covering this, so you want to use a nice heavy plastic. We have a six mil here, I think. Um, you're going to need to weigh the edges down. You can use bags full of sand, bricks, large stones, any type of material. You don't want it permanently attached because on hot days, we're going to need to lift the plastic cover up and allow this uh, air to ventilate out. You could attach a long strip of PVC pipe to the end and just simply roll the plastic up out of the way when you're not using it. In the winter time, opening the ends for ventilation is going to provide uh, adequate air movement to cool inside your hoop house. You can use a similar structure to this to overwinter your plants, but instead of the clear plastic, you're going to want to use white plastic.